Hey guys, so today we are going to be looking at DinoLand, which is a new secure runtime for JavaScript and TypeScript made by Ryan Doll, the same guy who made Node.js. So we are going to have a look at it and understand the basics of Dino today. So first things first, you have to install Dino on your computer. So to do that, click on install over here and run one of these following shell commands to install Dino locally. After you've got Dino installed, then you run dino by simply running the command dino run and your file name. So we are going to do that right now. I will copy this example program from here, paste this over here. And once I run it, we see welcome to dino being printed on our screen. That's the basic command. So I've got a few steps noted down here about all the things that we are going to cover in this video. So we have already covered installation by running one of these commands. Now the next command that we are going to learn is dino run. So using dino run you can either run files which you have written down locally or from over here. So I have already run a file over the internet. However if I want to run a file locally I will create something like uh, let's say demo.js and I write console log hello world inside it so I have written this demo.js file over here now I am going to call this using node first so to call this in node I would just write node demo so let's try to do the same in dino right now dino run demo then we see that it couldn't resolve the module because it looks for absolute or relative paths with the extension included if you don't give the extension it throws the error so now I will do dino run demo.js and now this will work and since dino is a framework for both javascript and typescript even if i rename this file to typescript right now it will still work directly i will of course have to rename this to .ts over here now firstly it compiles the typescript files to javascript and then it runs it directly so that's the second step about how we can run files in dino so the next one is about how Dino doesn't have a centralized package manager like node package manager. Instead imports are done directly from the URLs. So if we go to this example over here and we, we see this code, right now I'll just copy and paste this into my demo folder. Uh, TypeScript is throwing a few errors for me like but these are based on node.js for example uh, we don't have top level awaits on node.js however dino allows it and we can't also import from urls however in dino we are allowed to import from urls so since we are importing serve uh, we are serving on the 8000 port i'll just run this code for now dino run demo.js and it downloads all the necessary files from the internet and compiles the main file and then it throws an error that allow net flag was not passed so dino is a secure runtime because we have to always pass the necessary flags to allow dino to do something so i'll take the allow net flag from here and pass it over here after that we see that it's listening on the code given here so I'll just copy that and once we go here we get hello world so the third part is that Dino has no centralized package manager like the node package manager instead imports are done from URLs so how this works is that Dino has a third party modules list at Dino land slash X so once we go here we see all the packages that are available for Dino so let's say that we want to create a router so we search for oak which is a router middleware for dino.js which is very popular so i click on oak after going to the basic usage page on the router i if i copy this code paste it in my demo file then if i try to run it right now we'll see that it firstly compiles the code after compiling the code uh, we see that since Dino is a secure runtime, it doesn't allow us to run certain parts of the application with, without passing the necessary flags. So I'll just copy allow net from here, paste it over here and when I run the command, 
then it runs successfully so it has ran in the back end however there is no print statement printed over here so we can't see that so now i'll go back to my local host and click on refresh so i get hello world so we see that our code is running directly it's importing the necessary files from dino land x through a url import and so we've covered that now permissions are required for operations and no centralized package manager like npm it also has top level awaits so this program uses an await over here to listen on the port 8000 so that's also something that we can use now after that uh, to experiment some more with uh, these uh, permissions for operations let's go to index file that i've already defined over here so this is a file which imports uh, json from the local file system so i have pasted this snippet over here it reads urls.json from the local file system and then parses it using using json.parse and then passes it on to the urls file so i'll console.log this to see what we are getting over here now when i run this code i'll get another error so after running this code we got the error that another flag was missing the allow read flag so this time i pa i copy this flag over here paste it here and then run this command again and now this time the code has run successfully so we see that uh, permissions are required for operations and we also get top level awaits here so to do that so to check for top level awaits i will write something like await console log hello world and then if i run this command i get hello world so it runs without errors however node won't be able to compile this so that's about it for dino guys i will be linking a much bigger article where i will be making a bigger app in dino it will be a URL shortener where I will be going into deeper concepts of Dino and doing some complex stuff like building a expiring URL shortener.